My less handsome, conservative evil twin, Matt Walsh, has another super hot take. And this time, he's going to explain why arranged marriages aren't just good, but they're actually superior to the current way that we do things. You know how we kind of get to choose who we want to be with and ultimately get married to? He thinks that it's better if you just strip away the choice from all of us. And I know that you probably think that I'm making some logical leap or I'm going off of innuendo or implications that he's making. No, he actually explicitly says this. Meanwhile, there are far too many choices. So the modern dating scene is what happens when every beggar becomes a chooser. Everyone is lonely and desperate for companionship, but the field is so flooded with options. There's such a surplus that you begin to feel like, kind of like I feel when I'm in the condiment aisle at Walmart trying to buy mustard. And there are 197 different types of mustard. And though all I want is just regular mustard, the overwhelming array of options paralyzes me. And I'm just standing there slack-jawed, questioning whether I should be settling for just regular mustard when I could be getting gourmet, Dijon, whole grain, honey, French, yellow, spicy brown, white, yellow, German mustard instead. All of modern life is plagued by this problem. Everything is plentiful and can be obtained effortlessly and cheaply. But it's too plentiful and too effortless and too cheap. So you can turn on your TV and watch literally any movie that's ever been made, any TV show that's ever been produced, and yet, how many nights have you wasted scrolling through the infinite catalog and then settling on reruns of, you know, The Office because there's nothing else to watch? Well, there's plenty to watch. It's just that you can't settle on any one thing because your awareness that there are billions of other possibilities gives you anxiety. And it makes it so that you can never be sure that you're choosing the absolute best option, which means that often you don't choose anything at all. So dating is like this. now. Whereas before you had only the eligible single people in your town to choose from. Now you have the entire internet. You're not confined by geographic boundaries or any other boundaries. The result, ironically, is paralysis. Now, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum are arranged marriages. Instead of a boundless, never-ending buffet of options, a young person in a culture that practices arranged marriages will be assigned just one, and they don't even make the choice. Their families just pair them up and say, here you go. There's far less freedom and far less autonomy in a system of that sort, but it is without a doubt superior to our system. We, we would be happier. Every person in the dating scene right now would be happier if they were just matched up with someone against their will, actually. You know, on one hand, I think that his honesty is refreshing because most conservatives are just compulsive liars. But at the same time, normalizing people to these sorts of authoritarian, draconian, antiquated views, that's an issue in and of itself. But I mean, it is important that he says the quiet part loud so we know to not take him seriously. So his logic here is flawed and I'll tell you why. First of all, the analogy about having so many mustard options and it's just paralyzing, just fucking pick one, you simpleton. But <laughs> with respect to his Netflix analogy, um, essentially, you know, what he's saying is that all modern life is plagued by this problem. Everything is plentiful and can be obtained effortlessly and cheaply, but it's too plentiful and too effortless and too cheap. So there's so many choices that we just can't choose. Therefore, the choices should be restricted. Now, first and foremost, let me just point out that in our late stage capitalist dystopian society, this is really the illusion of choice. All of these options that we see, endless shows on Netflix and Hulu, this is all distractions. It serves as distractions in the same way that religion once served as distractions uh, from the fact that we are being exploited. Kinds of, it kind of makes us second guess whether or not it's appropriate to rise up and take on the capitalist elites. Because I mean, I kind of have another episode of Lost in Space to catch up on on Netflix. So do I want to do that or do I want to rise up and overthrow the bourgeoisie? You know, th this is what it does. That's the thing that it serves. But his point is that, you know, the problem is that we sit there and we browse Netflix. We're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and we can never find something that we want to watch. And that's true. We've all done this, right? But the implication is that if we just were to have Netflix choose for us, that would be preferable. Now, Netflix actually did introduce a shuffle button where they'll just play something at random because they know that people do engage in endless scrolling. I do this too. But if you gave that a try, odds are 
you wouldn't like what the algorithm recommended you. Because the goal isn't just to settle for something so you can watch something and zone out. The goal is actual satisfaction. The goal is happiness and enjoyment. So taking away the choice, it may solve one problem, but it introduces a worse problem. The freedom has been stripped away, and that actually inhibits our ability to be happy. So is the goal just getting married, just so you can say you're married? Or is the goal actual companionship and long-term happiness? That's why his analogy doesn't work. Because when we're scrolling on Netflix, what we're trying to do is find happiness and satisfaction, and we're trying to find the best option, and in the event we selected a choice that was subpar, we know that that would not be conducive to us being happy. The same is true for arranged marriages. Now, I think that Matt Walsh knows, as strange as his takes are, that stripping away the choice from people is not going to yield long-term happiness. But what he's trying to do is warm you up to his authoritarian ideas one bad draconian idea at a time. Just last week or the week before, he literally came out against voting rights. He said it. He said, I am not in favor of voting rights. So by introducing these authoritarian ideas to you one by one, you kind of second guess ideas that you were taught were bad. And they're convinced, like it's convincing that they're bad because that's instinctively true. Being against voting rights and taking away our choice as Americans is a bad thing. Being in favor of arranged marriages is instinctively inherently bad because it's stripping away our choices but it accomplishes a couple of things for matt walsh first and foremost it serves the purpose of pandering to his incel audience as john iderola correctly pointed out on twitter but it also kills two birds with one stone because if we can forcefully pair people up we also eliminate the possibility of same-sex relationships because of course we'd only pair cis men with cis women so he's trying to introduce modern day arguments to legitimize his antiquated theocratic fascist state that he desperately wants and let's not mince words here this guy is a fascist matt walsh is a fascist he wants a theocratic state where nobody has freedom nobody has freedom of speech nobody has voting rights nobody has the ability to even choose who they get married to this is the essence of authoritarianism, and he is out in the open telling you what he wants. Now, he knows that most of his audience won't just immediately go for authoritarianism. If he says we should be an authoritarian dictatorship, his audience won't go for that. But one by one, if you take a certain portion of society and you say this can be solved with authoritarianism and that can be solved with a dictatorship, you warm people up slowly but surely over time and you get them to believe that maybe since that can be solved through authoritarianism and stripping away freedom, this issue can also be solved with authoritarianism. Maybe if we just jail more people, that will solve the issue of crime. Maybe if we ban freedom of speech, then that will stop people from challenging our antiquated draconian worldviews. That's what this is about. And this really shows how far to the right conservatives have shifted in the United States, where they are openly authoritarian at this point where many of them are just straight up against democracy in favor of a pro-Trump dictatorship. Now, I don't know if Matt Walsh is in favor of a pro-Trump dictatorship, but this is absolutely unquestionably someone who is authoritarian. And we know this because he's given us multiple indications that he is indeed authoritarian. So he's in favor of arranged marriages. And this is someone who is a pretty popular conservative. So if his audience wouldn't push back pretty vehemently against this idea, what won't they push back against? I mean, he's kind of getting their feet wet. You introduce them to one idea and then another and then another. And then before they know it, they're just authoritarian. This is what's happening. But it's not just Matt Walsh. He's a microcosm of a broader issue. The right has shifted so far to the right that they've run out of room to move. You hit a brick wall eventually and you just end up becoming authoritarian. And that's what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the devolution of Republicans in the United States from proto-fascists to just outright violent fascists. And now they're just saying it, and this shouldn't just be something that you laugh at and think, wow, Matt Walsh is really a, a weirdo for saying that we should have arranged marriages. This is something that you should take seriously and push back against, because once these sorts of authoritarian, undemocratic views take hold in a country, you can't really 
put the cat back in the bag. Once you open Pandora's box, you can't close it. So this is something that we all have to be cognizant of and don't take it lightly. Don't laugh it off. This is serious. Authoritarians in our country are increasing in their popularity. Fascism is on the rise. And this is not something to dismiss. This is something to take very seriously because it is serious. When you acting like a beta, 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 beta.